So over the last few years, I've kind of gotten into F Sharp for coding. Um, I think it's a really cool language, and I think it's actually a cool language for beginners. Um, and I mean like fairly beginner beginners, like maybe not absolute beginner, but okay, you've figured out your way around some basic variable declarations, and you know you know how a loop works and whatnot, and let's start getting into like actually making something that does something. And it's not really treated like that. So first of all, the reason why I think so is because it's uh, got three major advantages. It's got very light syntax, which is nice. Um, I think lights, this white space sensitive syntax stuff leads to uh, some actually really good coding practices because your code becomes kind of unmanageable if you don't do good things. Um, and I personally struggled with brackets and braces, just how it drew my eye and like finding the relevant code and intimidation, just lots of little things. But unlike a lot of the light syntax languages, it still has strong typing. Um, you don't have to type your variables. This is a, or this is a parameter. Um, these are variables. And I didn't actually technically declare the type anywhere. Uh, it figures it out. Um, but if you want to, you still can. And in the meantime, even if you don't, it's still strong typing. So you don't get that kind of error where like, huh, why is that int a string? Or, oh my god, that string is an int, or whatever. Um, because it'll just yell at you if that could happen, generally. I'm sure there's some caveat, but not in my experience. And then third, it's immutable by default, which doesn't sound like a good thing at first, but oh my gosh, it has led to so much better code and just lots and lots of little things like being able to pipe stuff and whatnot just it's really really nice and useful and I think it teaches really good practices from the get-go because it encourages you to do them and unfortunately in part doing to being kind of a second class citizen like C sharp is Microsoft's baby and F sharp eh, hi, I think you're here it's never gonna be your birthday though um, that's part of it but also like whenever you watch an F sharp tutorial maybe because of this a lot of it comes from a place of like, okay, so you've been doing professional coding in a real environment for three to five years. The main language, like C Sharp, Haskell, NoSQL, so it, like, what? Um, personally, I came from, you know, 10 years ago, I was the clever guy who knew how to copy paste in Excel and got sick of dealing with it. Like, oh, so you're learning Excel. I'm like, yeah, but there's gotta be a faster way to do this. And I got to macros, which led me to VBA, which led me to C Sharp, which led me to JavaScript, Python, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I've messed around with a lot. Um, but I've never had any professional environment. I'm often like the only person who knows coding in my environments, or I don't have any easy access to someone else who knows coding, you know? So I've had to fill in the blanks a lot. And I, this is just basically stuff I wish I knew in that regard, like that maybe everyone else knew when they got into this, but I didn't, and it wasted a lot of my time. And all it would have taken is somebody who knew the language, or maybe any other language, just like showing them like, hey, I'm getting this, like, oh yeah, that's that. Well, here we are. So my first thing, this is more of a suggestion, not a gotcha, but use Visual Studio. Um, if you're actually a beginner, like the kind I'm talking about, don't mess around with VS Code. It's a wonderful program. It's got a lot of power. You should eventually learn it. And Ionite is a great plugin, but it's not at a point where it's so bulletproof that I would recommend it as a beginner because you need to know that the problems you're having are related to you doing something wrong, not to something you didn't know you even needed to do or an actual legitimate bug with the software. So for an example of that, um, I'm going to go over here to the Solution Explorer and I'm going to add a file. So we right click, add above because order matters in F Sharp. Uh, and we'll call it test file. And I do think order mattering is actually a nice thing too, but that's another argument. Um, so we've got our module here, test file. And we'll say let test var equal one. And we have to save it. So control S. And now if I go and I try to open, eh, open. Uh, we start typing test. Oh, there it is at the top. I know it's kind of hard to see my IntelliSense, but at the top it says test file. So I can hit tab. There it is. Cool. Um, or alternatively, well, it doesn't have to go away, but I can do test file. There it is. Dot, hey, test var. It would not do that in Ionite when I was learning it. Now, I believe it's been made easier, or I just didn't know at the time, but that's because you need to modify a project file. And if you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. I didn't either. Um, so all my code was written in the main program between these two points because I didn't know 
how to get it to notice the other files because I was messing around in Ionite. Now, then I jumped to Visual Studio and I'm like, oh, cool, now it's working. All right, well, that's cool. Test file works. Well, you know, I really don't want just one. I'm going to want, like, you know, sub test file because we're going to really do this right. I wanted to learn proper code organizational skills and I've been okay at that in my other languages. Um, so we'll have test var 2 in here because we're really fancy and we'll save that. And why is it mad at me? Um, incomplete structure construct at or before this point in implementation of file. Huh? But the let is right there. Uh, maybe it's an indent thing. Uh, no, now it's really angry. Um, unexpected start of thing. What? what? Uh, well, this one doesn't need to be, whoops, um, forgive me. This one doesn't need to be indented, right? Well, oh, nope, nope. What, what now? Unexpected keyword. All day going around with this. So here's the thing. This can also happen. Back to, oh, look, it's working. If you have a namespace, because I see lots of things with namespaces, and I'm like, well, let's copy what other people do, namespace thing, because that's a really good naming convention. And what, 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 why is this failing again? It was just working. What's going on? They tell me to use namespaces, blah, 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 blah. And when you're frustrated and a beginner, you probably don't notice that the difference between your code and their code, if they have a namespace, is that. For whatever reason, a module needs an equal afterwards if you have a namespace or if you have more than one module in the file. So a lot of people I've heard just only ever have one module in the file. Um, I've also heard other people don't do that. I don't know what's right. But if we do this again, let test var. And you do need to invent indent as well uh, in this case. But now, if I put an equal here, oh, look, it all works. So let's, uh, hmm. He said too soon. Oh, I think you need a namespace when you do multiple modules as well. Sorry, yeah, you also do need a namespace. Um, so now you need namespace thing. That doesn't need anything, but that's all you need to do. And no one told me that, and I didn't know how to ask the question because I was getting these weird errors, and searching them didn't always help, and blah, 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 blah. I think searching them eventually led to me to something that said, oh, uh, yeah, if you're seeing that, you need to do this. Or I might have watched somebody make the fix in live in an example, but... If someone had just told me that, they would have saved me literally possibly days wasted. I mean, you know, a couple of hours each day of fiddling and ionide and Visual Studio of messing with code. So again, I was like doing everything right here, and that does not help. So that was one of them. Uh, now that we've gotten through that, let's talk about arrays and lists. So uh, data structures are important. Arrays and lists are amazing. So are maps and sequences and all these other things. But these are the two that are important to me. We have an array defined here of ints. We've got a bracket, open bracket, pipe, int, semicolon, int, semicolon, pipe, close bracket. And that is an array. I'm telling you it's an array. Uh, and we have a list here. It's exact same thing, but no pipes. You just have open bracket, close bracket. And you do that because a common pattern is something like, oh, look, I've got data here. Well, sorry, you do you use arrays and lists for all sorts of reasons. But a common pattern is like, oh, I'm going to pass a parameter data, and this is generic, but it knows that it's an array because I'm saying, hey, do array things to it. So it's going to know it's a generic array and blah, 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 blah. But let's say you're passing a type from a library. Now, in this case, that type, we're going to make it list of in. But in the cases I was running into, the type was like, you know, Excel Handler 35 or whatever, something that's not obviously a list. And we come down here, and I'm like, well, I thought that type was an array. And you hover over this, and you get this. Now, this is already intimidating when you're a beginner. This is one of the bigger problems with F-sharp, that these signatures and generics are everywhere, and you don't know what they are, and you don't understand it, and that is that is a hurdle. But the other sinister thing about this is, if you're like me, you have just learned that an array is bracket pipe and a list is bracket. And if you hover over this, you see a capital L list and you see these closed brackets. So it's like, well, I have a list, but it wants generic lists. Is that the problem? It wants me to pass generic lists? Well, if we go back up here, and it took me forever to realize this, and then I forgot it over the course of multiple months of not being able to practice, and someone finally told me again, went, oh my god, I can't believe this happened again. We hover over array, and you'll notice it says it's an int array, but it doesn't say the word array. It's open bracket, close bracket. 
To me, that reads int list, or when I was a beginner, that read int list. So when you're dealing with some variable that's been, you know, passed through three functions, you're like, oh, cool, I have an int list. Why can't I do list functions on it? A list is an int lowercase list, and maybe uppercase, I really am not clear on the difference there. That's a separate problem. Um, but this drove me frickin' mad. I can't explain how many hours I lost on this. Like going through the F-sharp coens, which if you haven't found those and you're trying to learn this, do those. They're super useful. There's a test project in there that's really great. And this drove me insane because I'm like, I don't get how to do array syntax versus list syntax and blah, 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 because this IntelliSense was confusing me. Um, because the way you define it and the way it's referred to isn't the same. I've heard it's maybe because it's from OCaml or it makes sense if you understand the compiler, but as a beginner, that was a nightmare. Um, what was the other one that I had? Because um, that was big. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. So another thing it took me a while to learn is that uh, semicolons are not necessary in the sense that you can replace them with a carriage return in the cases of delimiting something like this or separating things. So for example, it's white space sensitive, so I can't like put this over here. You know, it's going to, what's it going to do? Does it give me something? Wow, oh, it actually accepts that. I thought it gives you a, one of those, hey, you're not really doing this right, but I'll take it things. Eh, no. Okay, well, it's going to pretend to accept that, but obviously this is proper, right? Actually, that makes my next error even weirder. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's because I still have the semicolon. So you can do this, but you cannot do, I believe, this, right? Yeah, it's going to say no. But if you line it up, it goes yes. All right. Fine. So here's where we get to the fun. Uh, let's say we do the exact same thing with this list. We just, we don't like it being that long. So we're going to go here and get it all lined up. And we know this is right. It compiles. It looks happy. Um, now then, you know what? This doesn't need to be a list. Let's make it an array. And you know, you're through the middle of a major refactor again, trying to solve some other problem. You're trying to figure out how to do recursive loops or something, because you're trying to wrap your head around that. And you decide to make it an array instead of a list, and it gives you this error, and you're like, huh, what? And you hover. This value is not a function and cannot be applied. What function? It's an, it's an int. What? I'm not applying functions. This is a white space error, and it makes me sad that it can't identify that. And I'm sure it's a very difficult task. I'm not smart enough to know how. All you need to do is line these up again, and it'll work. And here it was super obvious, but again, when you are going through all these different problems, it's not always obvious. You just go, well, wait, what happened? How did that happen? Um, and it never clicks. Uh, the other one I'm gonna point out really quickly that drove me crazy is tuples. This is now an array, because I made it an array. Let's make it a list again, because it says list. And once again, ah, value is not a function, cannot be applied. Um, oh. It's a list of tuples. It like looks like just, oh, this is one, two, three, four. No, this is two indexes, two items that have subtuples. And if you look at the signature, you'll see it's int star int, because that's the symbol for tuple in IntelliSense, but not the symbol for tuple here. But is the symbol for tuple when you do something like, uh, can I show this off without making a fool of myself? Let's try. Let test equal um, print fn, you know, let's try variable, or, you know, test var, ooh, I've already used that uh, thing. Uh, you know, I'm going to make a fool of myself, but the short version is that very often you will see a tuple also done like this, so you have one, blah, blah. Um, and that confused the heck out of me. Both of these are tuples. This is a tuple in IntelliSense. So those are just little, little things. Um, Oh yes. The final one, I'm not really going to demonstrate because of various reasons, but the idea is that a lot of F-sharp code was written a long time ago, unfortunately. Like a lot of the examples I was finding, I'm like, oh, I'll do tic-tac-toe or I'll do um, snake or I'll do, you know, just something that like was a game because that was interesting to me and would show off like how to manage state in a recursive loop and all these weird little problems I was having. Uh, and you find the project. And you're a beginner. So what do you do? Well, you create a new project and you copy paste into it because you found it on Git, but you're still not sure how Git works and you've been fighting with clones for a while now um, or repositories or whatever. And, or you fork the entire repo rather than the one you want. Like you want one little snippet and you now have like a seven gig file sitting on your computer. I still do that. 
uh, sometimes. But so you copy paste it in and it says, oh, it doesn't work. And it can't find open windows.forms or system.forms or something like that. Forms is one of the common ones. And you're like, but this worked in 2005, 7, 9 or whatever. Why doesn't it work now? And some of that may be because you're on a more modern version of the code base and you need to revert versions. And I'm not going to show that off because that is a separate thing. But the other main reason that happens, because like the next step I often made was like, well, I made a new project and I copy pasted this in. It should work. Well, let me just start building this out. And no, it just does, it can't find this thing. There is .NET Core and .NET Framework. And I believe after it predates the existence of .NET Core, but these days it is considered better to try and do everything in .NET Core because .NET Core works on everything or most things. The short way to think of this is .NET Core is the idea that this should be able to run on Linux, Mac, or Windows. If it compiles and runs here and they have the .NET Core libraries on their machine, it will work. It doesn't really matter. If you make something in .NET Framework, it'll only work on a Windows machine. But it comes with a lot more libraries, and maybe that's baggage, maybe it's good, maybe it's getting obsoleted. I don't know, Microsoft can't figure out what they want to do, or can't explain what they want to do, at least, in a way that I can understand. Um, <laughs> but you have this problem because you don't actually have the references to the library. So a lot of people wrote their stuff in Framework because either they knew they'd be just messing around on Windows, or Core didn't exist. And now you're trying to do it in core. And the reason you're trying to do it in core is because you're a beginner and you were told to make a console app because that's what all beginners do. And when you go through either Visual Studio interface, I believe it does this for all versions that I've seen, when you start looking at F-sharp, it recommends a .NET Core console project first. In fact, .NET Core framework isn't even on the list of 20 Visual Studio 2019. You have to filter it for console projects to see .NET framework. And that drove me insane. Uh, again, these were simple projects like, oh, I want to see what Snake looks like. Um, everyone codes Snake and Python and JavaScript and stuff. That's a great starter project. And I couldn't even get it to run by copy pasting someone else's 30 lines of code. So yeah, be aware there's a difference between framework and core. Uh, I have coded everything I've ever written in core. Um, but I've also done very little front end. Uh, Forms used to be a popular front end. I don't think it is now because partly it's locked to Windows and partly I'm not sure what is. Like it looks like your options are XAML or WPF for diving into Fabulous and Elmish and it all seems harder than Forms was, but I don't know. I'll figure that out later. So yeah, um, I think that's it. Uh, I think F Sharp is a wonderful language. I wish there was some better beginner examples out there and you know if you want something to happen maybe help it happen so here's my contribution maybe someone will watch this and actually get something from it and i hope it at least saves you the frustration that i went through because so many things that i have wanted to do are so easy in this language and it felt so silly to be stuck on these just little things that, you know, like, oh, I need to add a space, or, oh, I need to, you know, do this. Like, yeah, that wouldn't have happened in a bracket language, but you have other problems with, oops, I lost my parentheses somewhere, or which bracket am I in, or just, so, here it is. Uh, all I can say is, I hope this helps somebody.